why use a forensic light source? To reveal the greatest amount of evidence, it is important to carry out examinations across the forensic spectrum. And this includes the use of ultraviolet, visible and infrared light sources. A forensic light source will increase the amount of evidence that is detected and can simultaneously increase the efficiency of both crime scene and laboratory examinations. Light is part of the electromagnetic spectrum, which is a collection of waves. Some parts of the electromagnetic spectrum are what is termed as visible light, whilst other regions of the spectrum, such as UV and infrared light, are what we term to be non-visible light. The crime light range can be utilised to search and detect evidence across this spectrum range. We can also use a range of different applications with crime lights to increase the amount of evidence that can be recovered. This can include fluorescence, material absorbs one wavelength and emits another, absorption, material retains particular wavelengths, and reflection, gives back, not absorbed, just touches the surface. Fluorescence. Different evidence types will absorb different wavelengths of light emitted from your crime light and produce fluorescence which can be viewed. We then can use goggles or filters to block out the emitted light which is not being absorbed in order to view the fluorescent emissions. Long pass filter goggles or camera lens filters must be used to view the fluorescent emissions. Long pass filters simply block the illumination waveband allowing the fluorescence to pass. Bandpass filters allow the examiner to block all but a narrow waveband of light above and below the fluorescence emission. An easy way to understand the theory of fluorescence is actually to think about driving a car. We don't put our headlights on during the day because we can't see the light being emitted from them, i.e. the fluorescence. This is due to the overwhelming daylight all around us, stopping it from being visible light emitted from the crime light. If we block out that emitted daylight, the emission from the crime light with a filter, such as when we drive at night, we can then easily see the headlight beam view the fluorescence. Light sources can also be used for both contrast and oblique light examinations. For contrast imaging, we can use light sources of different colours to lighten or darken either the background or the evidence we are focused upon. Similar colours reflect, lightening colour, whilst opposing colours will absorb and therefore darken. This will create contrast between the evidence against its background and improves our visualisation of the evidence. A colour wheel can be useful to help determine which light source is best to use. For example, if you have an anhydrine finger mark on a green background, such as American currency, we could potentially use a green light source on this evidence to create contrast. A green light would lighten the green background and darken the opposing colour. As ninhydrine is a magenta colour, it would therefore also darken the finger mark. Your end result would therefore result in a dark finger mark against the lighter background. So when used in contrast imaging, the image will give the best contrast when viewed in grayscale. We can also use low angle oblique light examinations to cast shadows and reveal evidence such as 3D finger marks, footwear marks and tool marks or surface impressions. UV fluorescence is widely used for the examination of evidence. UV light is not visible to the naked eye but the UV fluorescence is emitted in the visible part of the spectrum. Therefore, we can often view this type of fluorescence without the need to wear any filtered goggles. We can also use UV in secondary applications to allow us to improve our visualization of different evidence types. If you have a UV sensitive camera fitted with a UV pass filter, it is possible to see the UV radiation that is reflected back by the evidence or background. The different quantities of UV that are reflected and or absorbed creates and improves contrast between surfaces 
and the evidence types upon them that cannot be seen by the naked eye. At the opposite end of the spectrum, we can perform infrared examinations for a range of different forensic applications. IR light consists of longer wavelengths that cannot be seen by the naked eye, but which are reflected and absorbed in different quantities by different substrates. Since we are again working in the non-visible part of the spectrum, an IR-sensitive camera is needed to view evidence within the IR region. The camera essentially becomes an extension of our eyes, allowing us to capture a wide range of evidence which may previously have gone undetected. In summary, there is always more evidence at the crime scene than can be visualised with the naked eye. Different illumination wavelengths are used to locate and examine a range of different types of forensic evidence. Examination of evidence beyond the visible spectrum may reveal more than fluorescence examination alone. And crime lights can increase the amount of evidence that is detected by supporting multispectral illumination across the entire spectrum.